Okay. At this time, I'd like to call to order the uh, 9 September 2024 Jackson County Commission meeting. Um, we'd like to say thanks to everybody being here. We have a pretty full agenda tonight. We have a number of items uh, to pass our new business portion of the meeting, and then we have several items of discussion in the work session, and we'll get an update on the efficiency study that was run by Lee Fox. And we'll also get a, an update on the status of the County Museum C for him. Uh, that was run by APS, and uh, we do appreciate them being here for that. Um, at this time, I'd like uh, our county administrator, uh, Mr. Henry, uh, please call the roll to establish a quorum. Commissioner Goley, present. Commissioner Kenimer, present. Commissioner Buckner, present. Commissioner McBride, present. We do have a quorum. If everybody would please stand, we'd like to ask Mr. Porter and I'm going to be to read us an invitation, and I will read our pledge of allegiance. God, our Father in heaven, we are truly blessed. And we're so thankful for the blessings that you give us each and every day. We're thankful for this county and those uh, that choose to work in public service in very uh, various and different ways. We're thankful for them and for the families. We pray that they'll use their wisdom and their diligence to serve us and serve us well. How do we offer a prayer right now for the change of seasons? It's it's time for the change of seasons, and we're glad to see this and glad to see the cooler days. But, God, we're also thankful uh, for health. We have several among us that uh, are, are our employees and our friends and our family that are suffering from health problems. So, God, you, you know who they are, and we uh, pray for them, pray for a return to good health, and pray for comfort and peace. We offer all these things in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we uh, exceed any further, I would just like to say that our thoughts and prayers are with the Paratama for the traffic accident that happened uh, early Sunday morning. Uh, we have lost a uh, great young man uh, that has uh, dedicated his life to serving uh, the people of Jackson County, in particular a lot of our youth over the years. And so, uh, please keep the family in prayer. I'm sure that there's other comments later, but I just wanted to acknowledge that uh, before we got started. Um, we do have uh, in the uh, packet the agenda for today's meeting. Um, take a quick look at it. Um, at this time, do I have a motion to approve the agenda for the September 9th, 2024 Jackson County Commission meeting? Motion. We have a motion. I have a second. So we have a second. Any questions? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. I don't think we have any awards or presentations today. Uh, do we have any public comments signed up? We do not. Then we will move into the uh, new business portion of our meeting. Um, in your packet, you have the uh, minutes from the August 12th um, meeting and work session. I'll give you a, a minute to take a look at that. At this time, do I have a motion to adopt? The minutes from the August 12th, 2024 meeting and work session. I'll make it. We have a motion, have a second. Yep. We have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. At our last meeting, we had a discussion about <coughs> implementing a, a new element to our exemption policy for, for solid waste. Uh, and that uh, policy solution uh, to approve that policy uh, tonight. Uh, I will read the resolution. 
Um, it says, be it resolved by the Jackson County Commission regularly called meeting on September the 9th, 2024, as follows. Pursuant to 2227.3, a Code of Alabama and Local Act 2002-299, in regard to allowed exemptions from fees established by the County Commission for mandatory solid waste collection within Jackson County jurisdiction. In addition to all other exemptions heretofore provided, by the Jackson County Commission, an additional exemption shall be allowed to households whose total household income does not exceed 75% of the federal property level. Poverty level, excuse me. The policies and procedures established for applying for and granting such exemptions shall be the same as for all other exemptions as may be established by the county from time to time. It is uh, adopted this ninth day of September 2024 at the regular meeting by a vote. And at this time, we will have a roll call vote. Excuse me, first, I need a motion uh, to adopt uh, the resolution as stated. I'll make a motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. Uh, at this time, roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Goley? Yes. Commissioner Kimmer? Yes. Commissioner Buckner? Yes. Commissioner McBride? Yes. Okay, it does pass unanimously. Uh, so thanks very much for that. One note of this is this is uh, people apply, there are certain qualifications required and information that must be provided to qualify for the exemption. So next, uh, we have um a couple uh, motions uh, that we have discussed in previous meetings uh, one is a motion to approve and sign a resolution resolution to designate areas acceptable to the public on county property and uh, that motion would uh as follows that within the Jackson County Courthouse and other buildings and premises owned by Jackson County, the general public has the right of access to public buildings and facilities at the times and conditions as determined reasonable by the County Commission. Wherein the Jackson County Courthouse and other buildings owned by Jackson County, the general public shall have access to the hallways, waiting areas, public restroom facilities, and public areas of the various offices as may be determined by the department heads whose department is assigned those respective areas. The general public shall not have access to the private offices or workspace areas of the public buildings, except as may be allowed by invitation of an employee of that department. Do I have a motion to approve and sign the resolution to designate areas accessible to the public um, on county property? I'll make that motion. We have a motion to have a second. Second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion to Thank you. We have uh, two uh, contracts uh, to approve tonight uh, in our work with uh, Council of Aging and uh, Top of Alabama Regional Council of Government, who is supporting us in those Council of Aging activities that we're responsible for to serve our senior citizens across the county. The first is the annual contract with Tarkov for our Council of Aging operations, that it covers a broad range of, of those operations. A few points about this contract it is Top of Alabama Regional Council of Government's area agency on aging. The contract is effective the first day of October 2024. And the contract is between the top of Alabama Regional Council of Government and the Jackson County Commission. And it states, whereas TARCOG has been awarded a grant from the Alabama Department of Senior Services, and whereas pursuant to said grant, TARCOG has undertaken taking certain activities within the counties of DeKalb, Jackson, Limestone, Madison, Marshall, and whereas the grant Whereas pursuant to the grant, TARCOG desires to engage the contractor, which is Jackson County, 
to render certain technical assistance. The uh, initiation of services commences on October 1st, 2024, and will continue until 30 September 2025. The request for funds for a monthly budget or anticipated expenditures will be prepared by the contractor and submitted to Tarkin. It is expressly understood and agreed that in no event will the total compensation and reimbursement, if any, to be paid here under shall exceed the maximum sum of $129,530 for all of the services rendered. This is our annual contract that we signed to initiate our year of service beginning to October. Do I have a motion to approve and sign the annual contract with TARPOT for the Council of Agents? We have a motion. We have a second. Second. Any question? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next item again is a contract with Tarkin. It is for our senior artist program to, to support our seniors uh, across Jackson County. Uh, this is a contract is is stated says top of Alabama Regional Council of Governments Area Agency on Aging. The contract again is effective the first day of October 2024, and it's between Tarkin and the Jackson County Commission. The purpose of this contract is to award funds to the commission in order to expand the existing medication assistance program for the elderly to be known as the Alabama Senior RS Program. Terms of agreement begins on October 2024 and shall terminate no later than September the 30th, 2025. Archive agrees to provide $20,848 to the commission subject to receipt of funds from the Alabama Department of Senior Services. Do I have a motion to approve and sign the annual contract with TARPI for the Senior RH Program for a Council of Agents? I'll make it. We have a motion to have a second? No, second. We have a second. Any discussion? Not all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. If you remember last year, we uh, got a, a grant from ADM for a uh, car pickup, and uh, uh, that has uh, been a very successful program for us this year. And it has been part of the work that we have done with our annual community cleanup as well. Uh, Archive, I'm sorry, ADM has agreed to extend that program. And so uh, they have offered us a contract uh, for us to continue that. This contract uh, is between Jackson County Commission uh, and the Alabama Department of Environmental Management, and the agreement uh, is uh, entered in between uh, ADM and us. And for the beneficial use of discarded tires and uh, regulated solid waste uh, funded uh, by the scrap tire fund. The department agrees to reimburse the contractor, that is Jackson County, an amount not to exceed $150,000 for the services performed under this agreement. And this agreement term of agreement uh, is uh, from 1 October 2024 to 9-30-2027. Do I have a motion to approve and sign the agreement with ADM for the Jackson County right of way project funding grant? Yeah, I'll make that motion. We have a motion, have a second. Yeah. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's the last item on our new business portion of the meeting. <laughs> this time we'll move into the work session. And first up is a uh, solid waste item, this purchase of garbage truck. If you remember the previous uh, meeting, I will give authority to sell uh, one of our largest trucks, and this is uh, a request for your placement. So I'll turn it over to uh, Director Skipper. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, you should have before you a packet uh, of the garbage truck. This is like uh, Chairman said to replace the truck that we just sold. This truck is on Source Well. So uh, we're, we're good. We'll go ahead and purchase it. 
the truck is also uh, on the yard in the Pelham. It's it's ready to be put in service, and we are needing this truck to be put in service. So I'll report you the spec sheet and the uh, price. Does any of y'all have any questions? We have a break, so. Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah, yeah me and uh, our mechanic went uh, last week and drove it ourselves and did a test drive. I think it's truck would service the county well. And you do have the uh, funds. Uh, you, you did set the sale without uh, the amount of funds and uh, the difference between you. We have the funds because of the difference in the. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, uh, does this need to move quickly or will they hold Yes, sir. I was, was going to ask if y'all don't mind to set aside the rules, but we need to go pick this truck up tomorrow. Awesome. Do I have a motion to set aside the rule? Motion. Yeah, motion to have a second. I'll second. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Uh, do I have a motion to purchase? Uh, England Equipment Company, uh, a uh, garbage truck for the Jackson County Solid Waste. I'll make that motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Motion to. Thank you. Next item up is under maintenance, and we just not we don't have anything in the packet. Let me. The reason this item is on the agenda and it, it was to request approval to hire a temporary employee for our maintenance department. As many of you know, our director of maintenance, uh, Mr. Colby Dan, is uh, having some very serious health issues. Uh, he is in uh, the hospital at Vanderbilt uh, awaiting uh, a heart transplant and patient care. Uh, he is going to be out for a while. Uh, he is a tremendous asset uh, to our Jackson County family. But in the meantime, uh, while he has to be out to take care of and get, go through this procedure and uh, take care of himself, it, uh, I believe we need to hire a temporary uh, employee uh, to help uh, with our custodial services uh, for all the, the uh, Custodial activities we have across the county. If a temporary employee we hire a contract with us for up to a six month period of time. Uh, though it can be uh, uh, terminated sooner than that if, if, uh, if need be. It also allows the temporary and the contract you can extend for an additional six months, but in no case would we be allowed to exclude. Uh, I have this hire for more than one year. If more than one year, they would become a permanent employee. Um, so uh, this is uh, another item that uh, I think we need to at least start now to get an uh, advertisement to try and uh, do a uh, hire this temporary employee. So I would like to set aside the rules again and then uh, a motion to hire a temporary employee for a period of up to six months. Uh, for our Jackson County Maintenance Department. So with that, um, can I put a motion to the second time? Have a motion, have a second? Second. Have a second. Have a second. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Do I have a motion to authorize the hiring of a temporary employee for the Jackson County Maintenance Department for a period of up to six months? I make that motion. We have a motion to have a second. Second. Have a second, all in favor say aye. aye. Motion carries. Thank you. That will be of great help. Uh, okay. Next item is uh, we have uh, previous uh, meetings had discussions about uh, uh, coming to the point before we have to replace copiers um, or extend contracts. And so we have asked for our IT director to get some folks. So let me turn it over to Mr. Fletcher. So you guys should have three different quotes. Uh, two are from the current company that we have. One is from um, a local company uh, for, for request. 
uh, uh, in there is my recommendation, but uh, in, in any choice you guys make, uh, I, I can go forward with uh, any question I hopefully can answer. Okay, let me open up for comment, question. Uh, the only question I have is just, just, it just seems unusual, the, the copy rate for black and white, I mean, is there any way that that's that that's, that's missing a zero in there? Because I mean, if you add a zero to it, then it's right. it's a big difference. I, of which I, I know can, that they I can re-request that quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's just what they sent me. So I, I just I think on which quote, the one uh, purple gray. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. to me, and and again, usually quotes aren't that far off. Sure. So I, I know that was. Uh, again, we're we're not under tremendous pressure here. If if you want me to revisit that and make sure that's not yeah. there, we we can try this. Because I I would hate for that to be a, a an error in the top end. Absolutely. So that's yeah, it's a it's a no brainer on the difference. In the I I agree. Okay. Yep. So we want to hold this until we um, get uh, clarification. I will double check that. And next week. And then bring it back to the next commission. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Um, we have gone through the process of our uh, getting uh, bids in, our quotes in, and bid, oh, uh, bid opening process for our uh, annual public works uh, bids. So let me turn this over to uh, County Engineer, Mr. Campbell. Thank you, Chairman, Commissioners. Um, you should find a list in your packet that looks like this. That is a list of vendors and an indication of our recommendation as it relates to each of those vendors. This is subsequent to uh, sealed bid openings, as the chairman alluded to, that occurred on August 12th and August 19th. Those bids uh, that were sealed and opened are for the following items listed and the vendor recommendation is directly under that. I will draw your attention to an indication uh, out beside that vendor, and you'll see indications such as only bidder or low bidder or split award. Uh, and I'll just, I'll just go into a little description on some things that were not necessarily a repeat that you may have seen from annual circumstances. And uh, the split award is, is not new, but we have some items that were recommended split award and one of those is crushed limestone. So um, this will just be an example of some of the evaluation that is considered when we look at the awards and recommendations for each item. You'll notice that under the crushed limestone, it's a split award recommendation with Vulcan Materials Company for the pickup or FOB plant version and the, the aggregate that would include hauling to the job site would be contract hauled by that quarry will be for Rogers grouping. So uh, some changes in the way items are bid can precipitate this. For example, in this item that we're talking about specifically, haul rates are a part of that bid component. This year we saw some of the vendors offer up as much as double on haul rates. So when we look at past year's purchase as an example in this evaluation, and we look at future work plan for the year, in this example, taking into consideration County Road 93, there's a large amount of aggregate that would be hauled to that site, not by the county that made a large difference in overall price. So that split makes allowance for things like that. Um, hopefully the rest is, is fairly straightforward. Tonight with me, I'll have all the files for each one of these, and we want to make those available to you. So in those files, we maintain vendor lists uh, correspondence that in the bid packet that would occur, uh, any comparative analysis that we have gone through for each item, should there be any questions. And then if you, when you choose to proceed with this, if, if and when you choose, and we make award, then it allows towns and cities to participate in this same purchase. So it's a, a joint bid. Another thing that was the first, um, an advertisement, this is a little background and also an oddity for this year. So 
with the advertisement for items 500,000 or less, then that three week advertisement shall occur in a paper of general circulation throughout the county for three consecutive weeks, as well as our direct sol solicitation to the vendor list that we maintain, as well as posting notice in public facilities. So this year, on that particular item, that notification was sent to the paper of general circulation throughout the county, which is sentinel for us. And we learned when we were following up for proof of publication that that did not publish. So um, immediately we started to figure out what was required beyond that. Thanks to Mr. Porter's quick word, section 4116.54A2 provides that if the bid notice was published on the bulletin board and the newspaper fails to publish the notice as requested, the bid can still be awarded so long as the governmental entity can prove that it made good faith effort to have the notice published. So we have that good faith effort for your review in the files along with the other, and um, we still come forward with the recommendation as this list describes. Okay. Open for questions. No, I just wish there was there was more better than a lot of this. It kind of speaks to the thing that a lot of people don't understand of why they cost so much to, to pave the roads and the bike competition is an obstacle for us. And so thank you for getting this together and going through all this work. Love to see a little more competition in the future. Thank you all. Let me ask, uh, yes, can you give us an indication of the trends of the bids compared to previous years? So aggregate, it's a large purchase item, obviously. There was a slight uptick in that, um, not more than $1.50 per ton, I'd say worst case scenario. Some, some mostly general overall, if I had to categorize it, it would be a hold on prices. So some minor uh, deductions, but overall generally roughly the same. Okay. Anything else? So we can take this up uh, next meeting. I think you have to have this approved by the one October. So approval by the 26th meeting would give us a week to get notifications out to the vendors. Uh, obviously, on the larger items, there's bonding and insurance actions that have to be taken. So that would give us time for that. Be great. Is that okay? The yes, sir. Next meeting? Yes, sir. Okay. And in the, I didn't say this, but in between time, I'll have this with me tonight. Obviously, for your review, I'll be available as long as you need. But in that interim time between this meeting and next, please reach out with any questions. Okay. Thank you all. Fire up. Yes, sir. Finish up late on 38. County Road 38. So the, the stabilization work is complete on the upper lower side. We're working hard uh, ahead of this rain, which we expected last week. But permanent vegetation is the next control and idle work. We want to have that established. We've got a lot of cleanup work to do. The next work will be mobilizing for the base. So the basin paving, getting ready for basin pave. Guardrail is still required, obviously. Um, and then we'll have roadway items, the remaining items. Well, I'm going to ask you to go a little further. Um, I had a chance to be out there this week and take a look at the work that the uh, police have done that the new contractor has done. I'm going to tell you for a change. We have taken on a pro this project in a manner that I believe will stabilize this roadbed for years to come. Uh, this is not just a great over and payable the operation that was done. Uh, so I know we've gone through this before and you've seen what uh, what has been done, but uh, that, that looks extremely, extremely good in my uh, So I just want to say thanks. Jonathan, you and Gary and, and all the crew members who have been involved with this and uh, working. So, and next next project is ninety three, and uh, I guess you believe that's going to be a little more detailed than thirty eight. A lot larger, but we appreciate the kind words. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, that's next uh, up on is uh, under commission, and it's uh, the two updates on two studies that we have ongoing. Uh, the first, if we can pull up uh, our Zoom uh, with Lean Frog, uh, they're, they're going to give us an update on the efficiency study that we've had up the way for uh, several months.
Byron, I think you're muted, sir. Hey, good evening. Uh, sorry about that. Um, can I be made the host so I can share the presentation? Was that Bar Byron or Byron? That was, that was, that's me, Byron. All right, you should be the host now. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, thank you for allowing us the time to walk through uh, the work we've done and share what we've seen and make some recommendations for, for you to consider. Um, it is uh, a lot of information tonight that I'm going to be covering with you. Uh, as I go through it, if you, if you have questions, uh, feel free to uh, interject. It may be better that way than trying to wait to the very end. Um, I'm just going to start walking through. I, I can't see you very well uh, while I'm presenting. So if you do have a question, make sure to speak up so I can, I can hear you. I may not see if you raise your hand or so forth. What I'd like to begin with is just up front. Uh, we do this for all of our assessments. We, we lay out what the restrictions are. This is basically saying that the work uh, and the analysis we did was based off of information provided to us. Uh, if that information was to change, it could change the uh, results. And we, we hold the right to be able to go in and make those changes. One thing specifically in this assessment that should be noted is that when we looked at the vehicle and equipment maintenance service, the data in those areas was limited. We had cost from the sheriff's department we had about six months of um, maintenance service records uh, from public works um, from a, a new uh, work order system that they had deployed. Uh, we did not have long-term service records uh, for solid waste or public works uh, beyond that six month period. And we did not have cost provided to us from the other county department. So we had to make some assumptions uh, we will lay those out for you uh, and walk you through them. But if if data was available, it may it may change some of that uh, based off uh, our assumptions. Again, the scope of our work, we looked at everything within the department. We looked at their processes. We looked at their technology. We looked at the organization uh, structure. We also spent uh, a, a lot of time looking at how vehicles and equipment was being serviced within the county. Um, and we looked beyond just public works and solid works. We looked across the whole county. When we uh, did that, uh, we went through several scenarios. We ended up uh, with three baseline scenarios, uh, which we will cover uh, in detail shortly. Um, if you have questions regarding other scenarios, feel free to ask again. We did more than three, but these three were kind of the ones that represented uh, the totality of, of options that were uh, had some type of uh, payback or positive improvement for the county. I'd like to begin by just walking through some key observations. Uh, I'll start with public works. Uh, one thing that we noticed within public works was that right now, uh, as you hire, and this is true also in solid uh, uh, waste, as you, when you hire mechanics, you're expecting them to bring all their tooling with them. Um, what that leads to, uh, you have disparity uh, in tooling across mechanics. You also have um, tooling that may be limited available. The county does supply tooling uh, for the field service trucks but not necessarily the mechanics working actually in the service bays in either department. Also, uh, the county does not have any diagnostic uh, equipment, uh, which uh, right now uh, mechanics are bringing in their own from home uh, as needed. Uh, but that, that is a gap uh, when it comes to 
uh, being able to maintain service levels over time and meet the full needs uh, the service uh, required. Also, keep in mind that the requirement of having mechanics bring their own tooling uh, can impact your ability to hire mechanics, particularly young mechanics or fresh out of school mechanics who may not have had the opportunity or uh, resources to build up that toolkit uh, like some uh, who have been doing the work for many years would have. Uh, the other piece is when we looked at your parts room and inventory management, in public works, there was a well-organized parts room, uh, and there was a there was actually a removal process. But basically, it's it's takes into account a clipboard system. It's all manual. There there's no uh, formal live running parts inventory system in place. Uh, Tires are stored somewhere separate from those parts in an auxiliary building. And uh, basically, the current work order system that is available and being used in public works, again, it's only been deployed for about six months, does have the capability to allow for part inventory and, and, and part tracking to work order functionality inside the system. Uh, so there's an opportunity there to fully utilize the technology you have to put better controls in place uh, over parts management. One thing we also did at both departments, we assessed what we refer to as the process and performance maturity level. What we want to see here is that, you know, what level of uh, consistent processes does the department have? Are those processes documented? Uh, are there measurements in place to let you know if processes are working? Are there measurements in place to help guide you where you can make improvements and basically drive improvement continuously through the organization? What we've seen in, in public works was that, the again, there's been a lot of improvement, a lot of strides made. There, there was still some opportunity, though, uh, in, in the in in the maturity level, there's ad hoc, fragmented, and defined, and then it goes up beyond that. There was, in most instances, defined processes. Uh, several of those were documented, uh, which put you put the department some kind of somewhere between being fragmented and defined. Not everything was documented, but a lot was, and the department had. Uh, evidence of making improvement, um, but there was still some, uh, and there was still, there was some tracking, particularly uh, financial controls were being tracked within the department, but there was still some room uh, to add some other performance metrics, particularly around, for instance, uh, the shop and crew management that could assist in driving future improvements. So there was still some opportunity to move fully into that defined state. As far as solid works goes, uh, similar issues with tooling, but uh, more so in that some basic equipment uh, was just lacking. Uh, there was no tire machine, no balancing. Uh, the field service truck that they had was in need of repairs and unusable at the time of the assessment. Um, and uh, same issue that mechanics are required to bring their own tooling. So you have various levels of, of tools available, available to each mechanic. The, there is a parts room there. Um, it's not as organized as public works. Uh, and there is some um, it, it, there is some more opportunity around better stabilizing the process and putting more controls in on inventory management and parts. One big difference is the work order system being used in solid works is manual. Uh, they're they're tracking the work, but they're they're putting it on paper. They're putting it in three ring binders. Uh, it's not uh, as detailed as uh, it could be with an electronic system. Uh, and it's also makes that data, uh, it's, it's, it's not usable 
to help drive an understanding of history or past performance and so forth. It would be better if they utilized uh, a, an, a, an electronic work order system similar uh, to public works. Inside the receptacle and route management system, we did see some opportunities on how the, that software could be enhanced and improved. Uh, we'll lay those out for you in a minute. Uh, and also from a process and performance maturity level, they were more a little bit behind. Now, I know there's been a history of directors coming in and out of that department. So uh, I think that's had some effect on this. Uh, there is a movement toward getting things more defined, more organized, more structured now, but they're not as far along as, as public works where you've had consistency uh, with leadership. Uh, I believe with time, uh, you, you will get those equal, but right now the departments are a little slightly off on when it comes to having uh, defined processes, documented process, measuring themselves, and being able to drive improvement using data. They're, they're, they're a little bit out of sync, but both departments have some room for opportunity for improvement. Some other things we looked at cross-departmental-wise, uh, one thing we looked at compensation, uh, particularly for mechanics, because we were looking at, again, looking at cost of adding, uh, consolidating service, what would that look like? Uh, it wasn't surprising uh, for us to find that uh, you're, you're, you were below market. Uh, now, keep in mind when I say market, I'm referring to your local industry. Uh, it's not uncommon for public agencies uh, or uh, and, and school systems, uh, government agencies and so forth to be running uh, slightly by, be below market. The reason for that is typically there are benefits uh, and opportunities within public agencies that people would not have uh, in industry. But in the in the case of uh, so typically we we look for public agencies to run uh, somewhere around seventy five to eighty percent of market would be really a good point to be competitive. Uh, what we saw was uh, both mechanics and lead mechanics were between 60 and 65 percent of market. So just a little bit outside of that range. Now, I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. And again, this is probably a countywide issue. Uh, we're not going to address solving this uh, in this assessment, but I needed to pull these numbers to understand cost and, and those pieces associated with a vehicle consolidation. Uh, the other thing that is kind of cross-departmental is both departments um, have a fleet renewal program. And it's, it's very important that the program that they have is balanced over time. Uh, you've had a unique opportunity because of your tax exemption uh, to be able to recover the price of vehicles, uh, but you're seeing inflation drive those prices higher. You're also um, seeing though, the older the vehicles, the more service they require. And, and we actually took that into account when we looked at the scenarios, your actual fleet age and odometer readings. Uh, so right now the program is, is kind of balanced, but that is something that has to be reviewed annually and really look at both vehicle cost to purchase uh, and also resale value in the resale market uh, at any time that could fluctuate and, and get out of sync. Uh, so you have to balance it between the replacement cost and then the extended maintenance cost if you were to maintain it. So while this has worked uh, historically and it, it can, is working on, in some instances, uh, you ju it just has to be, a, it needs to be systematically reviewed and really work to maintain. It's not something you can let run on autopilot. Um, I'm going to get now into uh, the consolidation scenarios that we reviewed. Uh, we did several, uh, but these three were really the, the um, covered all aspects of all the other ones. And, and the first one was, okay, 
what if we just maximize the efficiency in the current shop? What would be required to do that? And, and, and what would that look like? The next was what if we consolidated uh, public works in solid waste? Uh, and then the third was what if we integrated countywide fleet maintenance? Now we, we did some variations and hybrids of these three scenarios, uh, but when we did, for instance, like what if you put public works in the sheriff's department together? What if you just brought in the, the other county departments? Uh, you know, we, we sliced and diced it several ways. These three scenarios really are the run range of opportunities. Uh, so you really didn't gain anything from those other scenarios. Uh, they were, e you either had the benefits uh, to a lesser degree than these or, or there were no benefits. So that's why we didn't just do three, but these are the three that we outline in detail in the assessment because they're, they're kind of the base, the baseline for considering consolidating the shops. So in doing that, uh, I'm going to walk through each scenario briefly. Um, there's a lot more detail around these scenarios. Uh, I do have uh, one page that kind of shows all scenarios together. Because there's so much detail in that, it's going to be a little uh, probably hard for you to read. I apologize. But inside our full uh, report, you will be able to find uh, the detail that composed this and, 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 and a lot more legible and more clear. Uh, but for the sake of trying to get it in a summary presentation to give you tonight, uh, I had to kind of squeeze some of this information on, on in slides for the presentation. So bear with me, if you will, while I go over this. Uh, the first scenario, maximizing the current shop. So in this scenario, we're basically just wanting to improve the efficiency within the shops. And what we look at is there's between 8,000 to 25,000 in, in tooling and equipment needed. Uh, if you made the case to enclose solid, uh, maintenance exterior, there would be uh, some cost associated. With it. it was not clear to us that that would be a significant uh, payback to do that. We did leave it as an option. We did show that in the cost detail. You will see the option if you close that. We do recommend adding uh, a four post uh, lift portable that could be used in that area as it is now open. Uh, what this basically gets you, it, it allows the departments to stay uh, autonomous. Uh, it, it, this is the lowest cost option. It's not the lowest, but it's, it's one of the low cost options. Uh, it keeps the vehicles close to home, to where they're being serviced, and it allows you to really focus on capturing data because as part of this scenario, we did look at rolling out the work order system for solid works, similar to public works. So you could, and rolling out that part management pieces so that you could have good controls in place in both instances and gather data over time. Uh, the, some of the cons to this, there's not any substantial hard cost savings. So what, what I mean by that, is and 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 maybe I'm not trying to speak down if you guys understand the difference in soft and hard cost, but I'll just reiterate that uh, hard cost is 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 real money. We're not going to be spending money we used to spend. Uh, soft cost would be an improvement in in maintenance speed, uh, improvement in uh, the ability to get a down vehicle back up and and on the road. Uh, it's it's improvements. Typically, you find that for every three dollars of soft cost, you'll eventually get one hard cost dollar. Um, the what we did when we ran the scenario, it improves things. It helps the service levels, but it does not generate hard cost savings. It just generates improvements and efficiencies, uh, but not enough that you would see any reduction in labor uh, and you would not necessarily see any reduction in cost. Uh, so first off, that, that's, that, that's a con. 
Uh, you don't have any economy of scale when it comes to uh, equipment. You're going to have to, you, both departments use similar equipment. You would still be paying both of that. Uh, you run the risk of um, not having any standard processes in it within the group, something that would help and assist that the, and in the future you decided to merge these departments. If, for instance, the, the fleet sizes grew or your exterior cost increased, uh, it would there, you run the risk of the departments being more embedded, more individualized, so you wouldn't be able to bring them together. Uh, and again, you're going to have duplication of material uh, equipment, and that's going to increase some of the cost. Um, the next scenario we looked at was what if we consolidated these two departments, just public work, because they're already on the same campus. Could we do that? Uh, when we looked at that, we saw that uh, it does reduce your tooling uh, and equipment costs to seventy-five to twenty thousand dollars in tools and equipment. You might possibly be able to do this in the current facility. Uh, if you had to add space, you could do it by enclosing the the the, the thousand fifty square footage on the back side of public works, uh, which is actually uh, a lower price than than uh, doing that in solid works uh, to that that bay, and that would actually add two more functioning bays uh, inside public works. Uh, the solid waste field truck that you wouldn't have to repair that. You probably wouldn't need it. You could use what you have. Uh, you wouldn't have to acquire uh, the, the tire changing equipment in that uh, balancing that's already available to you in public works. Um, and so the total setup cost for that could be as cheap as 7,500. If you did build out that back side, add those bays, uh, about 68,000. Uh, so this is a lower cost option on equipment uh, and gives you a lot of flexibility. So you, you, you gain the soft cost savings uh, of having the right equipment, having strong processes in place. You already have the work order system and solid works functioning. You could turn on the inventory module fairly easily. It would give you centralized control of those things. Uh, but really, the, the cost savings would only be in setup cost. You would see a reduction in the equipment needed uh, to roll this out versus just optimizing both shops. It's a little cheaper to bring them together. Um, it increases staff utilization to fill gaps inside the department. Uh, it also, again, allows for uh, having standard processes and having under everything under one point of control. Uh, there are some negatives to this though that are not uh, to be taken lightly. One being that to do this structure, you could face resistance from staff and you may lose staff, particularly uh, if the economy does not turn, if it stays uh, where it's at today with unemployment levels where they're at, uh, with your requirements to have them bring their own tooling and where you're at with pay, uh, it could be a real struggle to staff this if you lose people because they're upset about having a new reporting change and structure. That's probably the most significant drawback to this is there, there could be blowback in your staffing and you could lose staff you need and have a hard time finding new uh, people uh, to bring in to manage this. Uh, there, of course, is the cost associated with merging, uh, and there there is some logistics issues that would have to be dealt with between uh, public works and solid waste and managing that equipment uh, in this scenario. Uh, the last scenario was looking at across the whole county. This was the only scenario that had some uh, savings, uh, hard cost savings associated with it. Um, and it would require uh, significant more investment though. From a equipment perspective, you're looking at 12, five to 25,000, but you're, you're, you would have to 
you could expand that back area, that 10,000. I looked at it several different ways. One was the bare minimum would require that we expand and take that 1,050. And that puts you right at eight, you know, just a little over 8,000 square feet, which if you look at standards, that's kind of the minimum. Uh, the standard is between 8,000 and 16,000 square feet for the, the number uh, of fleet, uh, uh, the size of your fleet and your equipment count. Uh, if you're right on the cusp, uh, I don't think you need the 16,000. What I priced was actually either doing the 10.5 or going to like 12.5, that median point, which I, I think would be more reasonable. But still, uh, that throws up. If you have to do that median point, which would be adding, you know, another forty-three hundred to nine thousand square feet, that would that throws up the money considerably. On the nine thousand, that's the that's the high side. The mean is that nine nine hundred and three. That's still close to a million dollars uh, to expand. Um, you would also have to add a staff member. Uh, and so that you would have reoccurring costs add of about $43,000. That would be for someone uh, to assist on the part side and the admin side of staffing this. Now, one thing we looked at as part of this scenario, we looked at if this would be a standalone department or just added under, say, public works. What we saw was that if you make this a standalone department, that minimum of $43,000, that's just that parts admin. You would then have to add uh, a new director. You would still have to have that parts admin. And right now, some of these staff are engaged in mobilization of public works equipment. Public works would have to maintain someone to do that. So that's three additional positions if you try to make this a standalone department. And when you do that, it, it throws the cost completely out the window and doesn't make sense for you. If, if you merged it inside of public works, um, or at least over the guidance of, of public works in that facility, uh, you, would, you would only see a hard cost savings of about 15.5. So you're you're talking a million dollar investment for fifteen thousand dollars a year. That is that's 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 not really a wise choice. I don't I don't believe. Now the details of these assessments are on the next page. I'm sorry. I I know it's hard to read, particularly if this is paper right in front of you. Uh, but I did this in case you guys asked me questions, so I could I could refer to the detail. Uh, and, and of the scenarios, the best scenario is the shop consolidation. Yet while this is the best option, there are still significant challenges and risk uh, to this option uh, that should not be taken lightly. And because when I looked at the, the again, you're, you're, you're saving some equipment costs, you're, you're, you're getting a little more efficiency, but it's soft cost dollars. When I look at all that and the, the the change management aspect that you would have to go through to do it, my, my recommendation actually would be that you kind of leave the department separated. Uh, that's that's not a good option to bring these together. Uh, and mainly it's associated with that cost to implement, the risk with employees, and then the limited hard cost savings. It, there's just not enough payback. I think you would be better pressed to leave the shop separate, maximize their tooling, uh, get the work order piece in place, get the parts management in place, capture that data over at least a year or so, so you've got good data. Uh, and then with that good data, you could relook at this and and see where you're at. But right now, with the limited data we have, uh, and currently what you're paying uh, at the for for maintaining the sheriff's fleet, uh, it really doesn't make fiscal sense to merge these shops. Um, it 
it makes sense to get the best efficiency you can out of them and put the controls in place. That, that's really the recommendation. There are some other recommendations for both public works and solid works if you keep them separate. Uh, I, I've got those outlined in detail following this. Uh, I'll start with public works. Uh, first would be to provide, you know, standardized toolings for mechanics and diagnostic equipment. Uh, I think that's pretty self-relevant what that is, but I do lay out the benefits and, and how you could go about implementing it. The next one would be to formalize your inventory control uh, and utilize the existing software that you already have doing your work order systems. They, they've done a good job of getting that up and going. They're using it. There was real data in the system, uh, but again, only about six months when we did this. It would be great to get the parts control uh, inside that system uh, and then uh, track that and have that data as, as well available to you. Uh, the other piece is that we would suggest that the department continue to standardize processes and put in place some key performance measures, uh, particularly beyond financial. Uh, and again, with the good work order system, you could you can look at all the all you know you can look at mean time between failure rate on vehicles. There, there's a lot of good data points and key performance measures that you can set up to understand how to drive improvement that you just don't have right now. Uh, so we would suggest those uh, going forward. Uh, as far as solid waste goes, we, we do suggest getting the equipment that they need and getting their truck repaired or a new truck that they can use in the field. Uh, this, this is, again, it's a little more than on public works because it's not just tooling and uh, diagnostic equipment. It is some bigger issues, bigger pieces of equipment, and, and again, that field service truck. Uh, we also suggest that making some changes into the your, your receptacle and route management system, uh, we want to be able to allow a dumpster uh, assigning inside the system. And also right now, there's a very manual process where you're calling and making uh, phone calls for, for clients that, that owe you money. Uh, it would be good to automate that notification system. That could be done fairly economically and save a lot of labor time on in that function. Uh, the, these, are, these are not huge things, but they actually could make a difference in, in labor and help uh, not enough to or reduce a person, but enough to open up some capacity for someone else to do other things that are needed inside the department. And then uh, last, uh, actually not last, yeah, uh, the second to last, not lastly, is, is we need to implement a work order system and inventory controls in solid waste. I know that the, your, 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 um, waste management system that you have allows you to have uh you, you have work orders now but those work orders are about that we need this can we need this dumpster it's those type things there may be a maintenance component to it but you already have that cmis system set up uh it's already being used uh in public works you would it, i would suggest integrating and using that across both departments so you have good data that is similar that you can pull from to help make uh, decisions regarding improvements and, and, and do some of this work in the future as things continue uh, to change. So I would suggest rolling out the CMIS work order uh, system in SOLIDWORKS just like you're doing it uh, in public works. Now, we probably need to fix some of that uh, stuff like the, the auto notification stuff to open up some capacity of the office staff to help support that work. That is one reason I led with that first then to this. Uh, by opening up some capacity in that staff, then they could help implement this and keep it in check and rolling it forward and rolling it out. Uh, lastly, uh, we would like to see 
SolidWorks document more formal processes and again, put in place some key performance measures because they, it, it's, they're just not as mature as public works. Uh, you have a new director, he's, he's doing good things. This is just a matter of time, but we do believe that that should be a goal of both departments to get their uh, internal core processes standardized and measured so they can identify opportunities for improvement going forward. Uh, that is, uh, in essence, uh, the summary of our findings. There is a detailed report. Uh, I don't know if they, that's been made available yet to you. Uh, I have sent uh, a copy over, but uh, I would suggest taking time to go through all 100 pages of that, go into those scenarios, look at how uh, we laid each one out, the any assumptions we made, you, you'll be clearly able to see that. You'll go, we go as far as actually even having organizational charts for each scenario, what the staffing should be. One thing that's in there too that you'll find very intriguing is when we looked at staffing models, we looked as if your fleet's new versus your fleet at its current age in odometer readings, what the difference is. So what, what you'll see, of course, is right now your, your, your shop staff is sized based off of the equipment uh, condition that you're using. Uh, you'll see that the newer the equipment, the staff would actually need to reduce some. Uh, that's some interesting data you may find useful going forward as well. Any questions? Um, no one spoke up, so I didn't, I didn't pause, but I might have just thrown a lot of stuff at you very quickly. So I'll be happy to go back if I need to. So yes, the vision got the detail to do that for but uh, questions and comments uh, for all time. Well, we will take a look at it and then uh, uh, we will get together and, and discuss. Okay. Fire, right, thanks very much. Appreciate it. And uh, okay. we'll be in touch. Okay. okay. Thank you, guys. Next up, we have a status report on that. Uh, copies of the, the most recent draft for the first. You've already got one, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Jason Farner with KPS Group. Uh, we have been um, working on the economic resiliency plan uh, since, um, I guess, back in uh, December last year. In that time frame, uh, we've um, conducted a pretty significant uh, public involvement process to, to get an understanding of how the, the community throughout the county feels about the way uh, Jackson County is changing, how it is today, uh, and their expectations uh, for the future, and that has that has helped inform uh, what what has gone into the plan. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to to make sure to look at was to get an understanding of what is likely to be uh, what, what's likely to occur in the next several years in terms of growth. Um, and so we looked at some some different metrics and trends, how the county is changing um, in terms of the number of households. Um, going going beyond the the census data uh, to get a, a little bit more accurate picture uh, of what's on the what's happening on the ground, we looked at um, uh, water system uh, increases in in residential customers. Uh, we looked at school enrollment data, and what we found in looking at those three different metrics is there's none of them line up quite clearly to give us a a solid. This is what's happening in the county that you're seeing steady growth in in this area. Uh, what we can tell is so in terms of the the uh, water water system um, data number of residential customers you're seeing um, incremental increases in a lot of different areas of the county. Uh, for example, in the the section Dutton area 
um, in uh, the Jackson County's water system, Scottsboro, um, and in the, the Cumberland uh, Mountain Water Authority. We're seeing uh, some, some uh, increases in, in residential customers. Um, what, and when we discussed this uh, with the steering committee, one of the things that I think was uh, Caleb uh, pointed out is that um, some of what he's seen in, in his part of the county is that some of that are not necessarily new homes, but people who are converting from well to the water system. So we, you know, it's not necessarily a one for one increase in households based on the, 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 the water system data. We are seeing uh, at, in city of Scottsboro schools and Jackson County schools that for the last 10 years, um, enrollment has declined about 10% in both systems. Um, so that throws, throws kind of a wrench in the works and trying to understand whether or not your population is increasing. Um, it could very well be that uh, new households are just have a very small number of those may have school age children. Um, there may be more families who are doing homeschooling. So there are a lot of different things that, that um, could account for that. And then the tax assessor data, we are seeing new homes appearing in the tax rolls. But what the, the, that uh, data does not account for is homes that may be going vacant during the same time period. So if you had, uh, you know, 100 or 200 new homes in the last couple of years appearing on the tax rolls, you might have had 25, 30 or 40 homes going vacant. We just can't, we don't have a way to, to track that. But just looking at all, all of those uh, data points, we do feel confident that there is some increase in population. It's just hard to really uh, create a clear picture based on the data that we had available of how much population is increasing. It's we we certainly feel the you know census data that has has uh, that we're we're seeing um, over the last several years has has been showing the county population declining slightly and some projections that the um, Center for Business Economic Research in in uh, at University of Alabama their projections have kind of shown. Uh, some decreases. We feel like that's based on what we're seeing in the county today. Some of some of anecdotally, some up in these three different um, data points that there is either some stabilization or increase in population happening. So what we're seeing in the, in the the census is probably not recognizing, but maybe you know the next census or or the next several years with the American Community Survey you'll start to see those numbers change in those, those bigger data sets uh, to reflect what we're, what we're seeing in the county. Um, so we, we wanted to uh, get a, some, some numbers to work with uh, to uh, kind of project out and look at um, what, what will be the needs in terms of infrastructure uh, and, and services in the county if the county is to lead some continued growth uh, and we, we, we did several different projections um, and came up, we'll see these two uh, orange bars in this graph. And those are basically representing uh, if Jackson County is able to maintain the percentage of the four county growth around Madison County. You're, it's been slightly declining each, each 10 years through, through, from you know, looking at census data. Um, but you're at about 8% of the total population in the four county areas surrounding Madison. If you're able to hold that line, the region is growing. So if you hold that line, you will grow. Your, your numbers will grow. So that's what those two numbers are showing there. So by 2040, we're looking at a potential increase of 20 to 30% of your current population, which means that by 2040, you could see somewhere between 12 to 17,000 new residents in the county. Um, and that's that's really look that's assuming that you're going to be able to benefit, continue to benefit from the sort of economic growth that's occurring around Huntsville and Madison County. Uh, not discounting what you can grow locally, but that that ripple effect will ben will ultimately benefit you and drive population growth in the county. Um, and of course, if we if we make those kinds of assumptions that um, the population growth that you're likely to see in the county is going to be geographically connected to that sort of economic relationship that you have 
with Madison County. So you're probably going to see more population growth around 72. You're going to see it on the west side of the county, um, up, you know, all the way to Scottsboro and probably into Hollywood. That sort of tracks with what we saw with the the water system information at Bridgeport. You know, the, the communities on the, the the far east side of the county are not really seeing much change in terms of um, population according to the to the water system data that they're they're either staying about the same or dropping just a little bit what we are seeing more on the from you know Scottsboro and more to the west both north and south we're seeing um, more activity um, and so uh, in terms of impacts of growth and, and kind of preparing for that or uh, setting the stage for that to happen um, Woodville and Paint Rock um, are because of where they are located geographically, are um, good locations to to see some uh, growth coming out of Madison County. Um, of course, Paint Rock does not have uh, a sewer system, which is going to limit the ability to to um, capture some you know significant residential growth. Uh, Woodville has a sewer system, has has water available, but those both of those systems are somewhat limited. Uh, to get the level of growth um, that can happen, uh, those systems are going to have to be invested in to 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 be able to enable you know any significant residential growth uh, in Woodville. That's very possible, and 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 Woodville is looking at doing that currently. They have um, they've um, studied uh, expansion of both the water and sewer systems. Uh, our recommendation is, frankly, that they might need to be looking at being a little bit more aggressive with the the um, level of expansion, uh, particularly in the, the in the sewer system. Uh, in terms of uh, the central Jackson County area, Scottsboro, um, Hollywood, and, and more sort of north of there, uh, definitely going to see more growth in Scottsboro because of the level of infrastructure, the services available, the amenities, the businesses, healthcare, all that stuff. If people who are interested in moving to Jackson County, whether they're working in Jackson County or working somewhere else, they're going to be interested in Scottsboro because of all that it has to offer. So we ex we certainly expect that, you know, of that 20 to 30 percent growth that you could see over the next 15, 16 years, a lot of it's going to be centered somewhere around Scottsboro. Um, Hollywood can can certainly uh, benefit from that. Uh, the, the communities to the north, uh, we expect to see. Um, some incremental growth, as is being seen currently, not you know not necessarily big subdivisions going in, but housing houses popping up here and there. Uh, but it, you know it's, it's a small, steady trickle of population growth, probably on on the northern north central parts of the county, uh, and then south of the river, um, as I mentioned, section Dutton area are seeing uh, some um, increased. Um, housing uh, development or or ha new households. Some of that may be uh, older homes that are being uh, renovated. New people are coming into um, that part of the county. Uh, we expect to see some continued positive growth in that area, but it's not going to be quite to the same level that we we expect. Sort of from from Hollywood Scottsboro and then you know west along seventy two, and then northeast Jackson County. The areas the, of the county that are probably going to see the least benefit from sort of the Madison County ripple uh, because of the, the distance. Not that they won't see any of it, but of, of the parts of the county, they're probably going to see the least of it. Most likely going to be seeing some benefit from the Chattanooga area uh, economic growth. Uh, that just hasn't really, uh, we haven't seen any impacts of that yet. It could very well happen in the coming years. Um, but but right now that's just kind of holding holding steady. Um, Bridgeport uh, is um, uh, seeing industries expanding in that area that are driving up the need for more um, water uh, system uh, for for the, the their water system, which is certainly a, a positive thing. Um, I'm going to go through uh, the, the 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 plan focuses on five major areas. Uh, it, it to it to talk about economic resiliency, and those are infrastructure, industry, 
um, housing and business development, agriculture, um, and tourism. Some of the key recommendations that are, that are in the plan are um, increasing the natural gas supply. Um, you've got uh, two, two uh, sources coming in from the coming in from outside of the county and the, the line that is uh, providing gas to the Scottsboro sort of central Jackson County area is limited and the Scottsboro WSG is looking at uh, some options for connecting to the Huntsville uh, gas uh, system that would um, provide more, more gas for them. Um, and that certainly is going to open up some opportunities that are, that are a little bit constrained right now for industry and for housing development. Um, cell service, as, as I'm sure everybody knows, is spotty throughout the county. Uh, you've got you know, providers who, who provide good service in one part of the county, but if you are using that, that provider, you go to another part of the county and boom, you've got no service. Um, the recommendations there is really to, to do a study to determine how to resolve those gaps, whether it's new towers or and, uh, new antennas from you know, Verizon or AT&T or whoever, uh, on ex pre-existing towers, uh, and then um, work with the providers uh, to to either build build some towers where where there are gaps, or um, work with them to install antennas in those locations. Um, beef up the uh, Woodville water and sewer system so that they can capture that that residential growth uh, coming out of Madison County. Um, work on Bridgeport Water so they can continue to support industrial expansion there. Uh, Hollywood Sewer, so the, the Hollywood area, like Scottsboro, can capture some of that, that um, residential growth that we're likely to, to see the demand for. Um, road improvements, you, you know all, uh, all about that. Uh, the annual funding for, for road improvements, uh, there has to be more funding available. You can't depend on grants, um, one-time sources, uh, there's got to be more funding available to keep pace with the, the thousand miles of, of uh, county roads that you have. If you're looking to to um, maintain, have have those resurfaced every 15 to 20 years, that's a lot of roadway um, that, that Jonathan is responsible for. Um, and um, then lastly, uh, there are some immediate uh, needs that could be resolved by connecting, str making strategic connection between some of your water systems. Uh, where one water system doesn't have enough capacity, you have one next door that if they're connected, uh, they can fill in those gaps. Um, and then long-term, having all of the water systems connected would, would really be a, a great benefit and would, could, could avoid costs to, to having major investments in one over another. If they're all able to, to uh, all all are connected and able to uh, support one another. Industrial development, you're doing well. Uh, you've got a lot of uh, a lot of good industries, um, pretty diverse uh, in the county. Uh, you've got a, a, a great um, workforce workforce development program and partners uh, in uh, Northeast Alabama Community College. Uh, in terms of areas where you have some need. For child care, uh, which may be uh, affecting uh, labor force participation, uh, may be affecting people choosing to live in Jackson County, whether they work, they might be working in Jackson County or working somewhere else. Without having child care availability, uh, it can can be suppressed. It can suppress uh, that that side of things. And then uh, substance abuse, mental health. Um, we hear. Uh, um, you know that there are issues associated that, with that, but also affecting labor force participation. Uh, so, working with the, your existing agencies um, to um, in, in provide greater access uh, to to uh, substance abuse prevention and and, and treatment programs. Um, you've got land available for industries to move into, uh, but. You know that you're not always. If, if you're successful in attracting new industries, you're going to have to uh, increase that supply as that land gets taken up. So that's more sort of a long-term uh, recommendation. Just watch as you continue to to uh, bring industries in the community that you will need um, 
uh, to provide more land, expand industrial parks, or create new areas for industries to, to come into, provide those, those shovel-ready uh, sites that industries look for. And then continue on some of the positive th relationships that you already have uh, in the region around Jackson County. Um, continue to be connected in with those organizations um, um, as they are, uh, from, from what we have uh, heard, they're very supportive. Um, particularly in the Chattanooga area, they sometimes are out of sites and have to uh, refer industries to other places. They want them to be in the Chattanooga region, um, but they don't necessarily have room for the industries that are coming to them, and they have referred some to Jackson County. So continuing to have a partner like that and, and maintaining that relationship will ultimately be beneficial. And so yes, sir. We've got about 10 more minutes. Sure. Uh, we did get a little too deep into questions. Yes, sir. We've got, we've got a few other things to chat about. I'll, 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 I'll wrap it up. Um, agriculture, there, there are just a few um, recommendations in the plan. Uh, building a river port that will uh, provide a way for uh, farmers to, to be able to transport goods in and out of the county um, and reduce their current transportation costs for that. Processing facility, that is a statewide issue. There's a lack of processing facilities throughout the state uh, because you do have, you do raise, um, um, uh, uh, you have beef and pork coming out of um, Jackson County. That would uh, be a, a big benefit to dairy farmers and an agricultural center that, that could have a lot of different components associated with that. Uh, housing and business development, one of the things that we after we did the initial assessment is that you've got you've got good county schools you've got in, in terms of looking at them from from the statewide perspective you've got good schools um and you've got a lot of things that people look for to choose a place to live in um you could probably be marketing jackson county a little bit more aggressively to attract developers and to attract residents you have a lot of the things that people are looking for you don't have to um, solve a lot of issues, but of course we did talk about cell service. That would be a big benefit. Um, improving the county's image, working on sewer, you know, some of those infrastructure issues, child care, all of those things that were mentioned before will help to make Jackson County an even more attractive place for people to choose to live in. Whether or not they work uh, in Jackson County, whether you know if, if they're working in Chattanooga or or Huntsville or if they are working in Jackson County, um, but to, to um, make it a, a more attractive place for people to live, a more attractive place for um, developers to build housing, which is needed to support those numbers that we're looking at in the future. Uh, tourism, there are a lot of different ways that, that you can take advantage of your existing assets. We know you have a lot going on in terms of um, historic, natural, um, assets in the county, um, having a, a really strong um, organized marketing effort that pulls all of them together so that people who are here for one thing recognize that there are seven or eight other things in the county that they might also be interested in while they're here. Um, marketing and, and having that, that, that tourism program is really going to be beneficial in um, increasing what you already see as, as a pretty productive tourism um, economy here in the county without having to, to really build a lot of new infrastructure or provide a lot of services. That's the great thing about tourism. They come in, they spend money, and they leave. You don't have to worry about uh, sending their kids to school or putting them on the you know water sewer or anything like that, picking up their garbage. They come in, they go. Um, they leave their money here. Next steps. Um, we are making some uh, adjustments to the plan draft that you have before you. Uh, we'll have those done in the next week, um, and then we'll be meeting uh, in end of next week to talk about uh, bringing our uh, grants consultant in, talk about some of these uh, initiatives and putting together a funding strategy of what sort of things that you might go after in the next funding cycle and start helping you uh, work in that direction. And of course, uh, we want you to be um, happy with the plan uh, so that we, you can get that adopted. So whatever uh, you need from us, 
uh, for the commission to um, be comfortable with that plan. Uh, we that's we want to get that um, closed out and um, continue to 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 work on um, that funding strategy and, and helping you um, work on some of these projects that you you select. Um, open it up for yeah. questions. Uh, I, thank you. This is this is a very very good study. Um, and while you were talking, I just went through and that this is where this should be located or these people we should be partnering with. So I think it I think it gives us something that that, that I've been asking for for years. I appreciate the work here of a good concise roadmap that says here are the possibilities. Here are the obstacles. How do we how do we navigate that, that to come up with uh, things that we can look? Because uh, you know, how are we ever going to see the kind of progress that we want if we don't have some kind of roadmap to it? So, thank you for for this. Uh, regarding uh, as we continue to move forward with uh, this meeting of funding strategies, uh, September the the twentieth. Uh, we'll, we'll put that before the steering committee, certainly to have to take a look. And the steering committee has been very active in uh, sort of turning this plan over various uh, uh, times. Uh, once that is done, we'll get it out to you guys because the commission has to approve this. One thing that we will ask for our funding strategies is sort of what is the priority of things that we need to go look at doing? Now, where do we start? And if we're going to go do something, there are some things that are already working. As you mentioned, the gas, there's a gas grant that's been applied for two years. It's a large grant with the Department of Transportation. Um, you know, we've worked some grants with roads, some large grants with roads, and that's looking pretty, very good. Um, and there are other things that, that are working that are supportive of this plan that we have in place right now. But there are areas that we've got a lot of work to do. We're going to need a lot of help from Washington and, and Montgomery and other places to get that done. And so then the other thing we've asked them is we need to get the elevator briefing that's uh, about uh, 10 minutes long that uh, we can carry to Washington places and say, here's Jackson County, and we're going to meet this growing need that we see coming. And the opportunity, these are the things we've got to have them on. And we want to pull that together so we bring that to you so it's all in that package that you see. Okay, well, any comments on that approach that you'd like to see? Okay, we will uh, get you the digits on this. You got the paper. Uh, we will certainly get the previous brief, the details of that to you. We've got some work to do there on the show. Uh, with that, Jason, thanks. Thank you. For everything. Um, you, you have a list of steering committee members in there. I would be glad to reach out to them and see what their views are. And you know those guys, so go ask them. Um, so that uh, concludes our work session. Um, uh, report from the staff, county administrator. Uh, nothing. Okay. Okay. Any engineer, anything else? Just a reminder, I can be available as long as you need for review of the vendor list. Okay, sure. Anything, Doug? Anything else? Guys, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. sitting in on that. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the work you did. Uh, there for us. Uh, County Attorney? Okay, thank you. Okay, next uh, comments from the Commission, uh, District 4, Commissioner McBride. Just one. Like the one you said in the beginning of the meeting about PJ, Terry, and his family. Keep them in your prayers. My children actually were personally affected as well. They were, uh, my youngest daughter, he coached uh, basketball. My, my son uh, spent a lot of time with him because he was uh, assisting with, with the class that he was in, and they got really close. And, and he made an impact. I want to keep that, that family in prayer with the Lord's Kobe's family and praise report Bob. I think Bob's doing 
much better and we're thankful the Lord works in serious ways. He's been a miracle there. That's all happened. Commissioner 30, Commissioner Butler. Yeah, I just want to echo uh, Commissioner McBride's sentiments. Uh, I, think, uh, I think it's uh, definitely a, a huge loss. Uh, so prayers for the family and uh, all all of the young people that have been possibly impacted. And may they, uh, may they uh, find themselves trying to emulate uh, the work and the efforts that he put into the life. District 2, Mr. King. Yeah. Chapter 3 of that. Um, TD had just received a job, too, after the university. Fixed the start. Yes, they have already started a few days, but the athletic party. So, so his mom's, too. She just uh, needs prayers. District 1, Mr. Go. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's sad uh, losing, losing folks. Of course, I, I met TJ. Uh, Back during the election a few years ago when we were all running for office and he he actually uh put in a bid to run for uh for office at that time too he didn't know him before then but very nice young man uh looked up to by a lot of the youth uh pillar of the skyline community and uh, always trying to do the right thing so i thought some prayers go out to his family and uh, i'd like to thank the folks of uh public work i see we've got a couple employees here today for taking interest in in some of the studies and stuff that we've done uh we just always want to try to move forward in the, in the right direction to uh, to help our staff and, and make things more efficient. And, you know, any we're here to help you guys, support you guys. So any way we can we can help you, we're, we're always open and happy to do that. Uh, I do have a question for our solid waste director. Uh, I noticed that we sent out a, a list on solid waste uh, of proposed sites to uh, folks to sign up for uh, exemptions. <laughs> Much like the uh, previous encounter with, uh, we did the cleanup days. Every area, District One's been admitted to this, and I represent people of District One. There's not a place on there for out the farthest uh, outreach of the county to uh, don't sign up for exemptions. So I'd like to have that looked at and amended. Yeah, we looked at. Uh, I, I know what you're referring to. Right? In the comment, but you put on Facebook that right? you'll handle it this afternoon. Uh, you know, we we looked at hot spots in Jackson County where we get majority of our exemptions. So uh, we we've never done this before. Reached out. We've always had people had them come into the office and do it. So we felt like this would be a good way to get out to the county and help uh, these hot spots where we have a majority of people that uh, are exempt. So these were the areas that we picked for us to go out. Again, if you have anybody in your district that needs to apply, uh, you can have them call my office, uh, Chad with the COA. I can get you his number and uh, they can uh, transport them to the COA if they need transportation. We have a COA office in Bryant, Bryant, Higdon, Rosalie, Neth. I mean, as I look at the list, and again, I'm not trying to be confrontational with you, as I look at the list, we have a list of Paint Rock, Woodville, Skyline, Hollywood, Wankson, Section, Pisgah, and Scottsboro at the Council Nation Building. I represent the people of Stevenson, Bridgeport, Bryant, Hickton, Rosalie, you know, the, the whole north end of the, uh, the county. And these elderly folks that live in Bryant, we have a Council Nation office in, you know, up there, a uh, senior center in Bryant. That's, you know, 50 miles to Scottsboro from Bryant. From, from out there. So we need to look at accommodating the county as a whole when we look at these things. I'm just I'm just bringing it to your attention that it, it, it needs to be looked at. And I appreciate you looking at that. Appreciate you bringing it to my turn. Thank you. Um, thanks for what you said about the Sherry Clinton folks in Jackson County. Colby and uh, what he's going through now. So thanks for everybody thinking about this. Uh, just one business item. Uh, we do annual uh, every two years we appoint a an Alabama Mountain Lakes Tourism Association board member. Typically, and every year that we, when we do that, it is our park director, the person most involved with that. So we will put forward a uh, a nomination. Uh, 
request that our next meeting for that. And so just just let you know that we need that done before. Uh, the next term starts on October of 2024. It's a two-year term ending in um, from the 30th of September 26. So with that, that uh, that uh, next meeting is September the 23rd. Uh, and it will be here. We will be in the larger room, not in this. I like uh, this room, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we feel it's a lot. I don't feel like I'm over here. Thank you. Uh, so with that, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make a motion. I have a motion. Second. 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 All in favor, say aye. Aye. aye.